Casey. And Shane. Have you seen how cheap motorcycles are on Facebook? No, I have not. I've seen how cheap models are. The models are cheap. Uh, motorcycles, you can buy a 1500cc big old bagger with boards and a windshield and a spot for your lady friend to sit. You mean a sidecar? Uh, yeah, a uh, whole thing. The back seats for the boys. That's right. <laughs> I like it. I like it when they hold me around my waist. Um, like two thousand dollars. I saw one for twelve hundred dollars. Giant, nice motorcycle, and I want one real bad. You know, if if the weather around the winter time wasn't so bad around here, I would love to do it. I'd oh, really love to. Same, same. Because uh, it's I. Uh, I'm a fair weather motorcycle rider. My hands get cold and my feet get cold and I just want to go home and I'm 20 minutes from the house, you know? Yeah, I, and, I'm and like 10 minutes and it to, saves on gas. And there's nowhere to hide on a motorcycle. You can't get fair. warm. There's no heater to stick your hand in front of. Fair. What are you going to do? Sit on one hand and then Put it crash on the up? Put on the engine. <laughs> now, why... In our 40K Fanatics podcast, have I started talking about motorcycles? And it's because I don't like them in the game. Really? You don't like bikes in the game? Is that not crazy? I play Chaos Space Marines, and I have no interest at all in those bikes. I am going to freak out right now because this, right this is this, heresy, is, so this, this is serendipity because I was literally just watching a, some lore content on the white scars, <laughs> and here you come with your anti-bike rhetoric. I am not here for the bikes. They don't make sense. Why? They are bi- Rule of cool, man. I mean, I get rule of cool. I'm all about rule of cool. But I don't understand how these guys with guns on the front. So, all right. Just from a, ju- just from a nuts and bolts perspective, they're riding the bike, hands on handlebars. They're cruising across the battlefield. They're shooting guns that are fixed to the front. How do they aim? These battlefields are all cratered up. They especially, don't. They don't do any aiming. But to be fair, yet, with a bolter, you don't have to aim too well. Man, look. Don't the bikes still hit on threes? Better than t- Worse than twos? I mean, I guess, but I'm, I'm like, it doesn't make any sense. And then... You take your you take your uh, chaplain on bike with his crozius up above his head, putting I'm those like, oars around. How's he hitting anybody? How are you locked in combat on bikes? I mean, they've got uh, pistols on there. How am I become on Sebastian side, Maniscalco you know? right now? <laughs> <laughs> How do you fight on the bikes? You're on a bike. <laughs> Jeez, <laughs> his Italian more upset Jerry Seinfeld. You know what? Th- this makes me think. That's of my limited fake Sebastian Maniscalco. But seriously, how is it that the bikes can be locked in combat for multiple turns? They're on bikes. What are they doing? Donuts? Uh, have you heard of Tour de Pharmacy? Uh, no. Tour de Pharmacy is a spoof movie that came out in like 2017. It's got Andy Samberg, John Cena, and I like Terry Crews, a bunch of other people. I've never seen John Cena. And in it's movie. all about <laughs> it's all about the Tour de France. Oh yeah, a I bunch like of dudes doing Tour de France, and it's a spoof on like um, you remember when they caught all those bike cyclists like blood doping back in the day? <laughs> you mean for that? 40 year period of yeah, the sport. And yeah. they're just like, oh, I'm going to win this with my own grit, sweat, and blood, and my other blood. <laughs> <laughs> and my friend's blood, because yeah. his is cleaner than mine. <laughs> so, yeah, it's kind of like you're saying you hate Tour de Pharmacy. Because <laughs> that's all I could think of when you were, when you were talking about it. I well, was like, <laughs> here's another thing. I really love cycling and the Tour de France. I just don't understand bikes in 40K. I don't want them. Rule of cool. I don't want them. Rule of cool. Today's a different type of pod. So yeah, welcome back to Forty K Fanatics. By the way, yeah, we're we're trying. I, I thought we would try out. We're a new, talking about bikes, guys. I thought we would try out a new cold open. That way, when people turned on the podcast, they would hear the now familiar intro song, and then they would say, "What?" <laughs> and then hopefully they would get at you on Twitter at at Forty K Fanatics and be like. Shane's a dummy. For not liking bikes. Or just a dummy. Why is he always talking this nonsense? 
Yeah. Because we want interaction and I told and he got me like totally by shot, guys. I didn't know he was gonna do this at all. No, well that's because we have our our pact, our dark pact, or dark pact, you may say, uh, where we do not communicate about anything before the microphones come on. Fair. This is content, folks. This is this is canon. You can't change it. <laughs> That's right. And you, you know why let a good piece of content go to waste? That was the intro, and now we need to open the bits box. Here, it's open uh, over there on. At 40k fanatics on X, it's not Twitter anymore, is it? Gosh, dude, I thought that my that some virus or like random X-rated site had like jumped onto my phone and filled it with viruses. Speaking of X-rated sites, have you noticed? Technically, it is an X-rated site because <laughs> <laughs> it's it's X. A, a new law has passed and is active as of August 1st here in the state of Arkansas in the U.S. of A. that requires you to uh, verify your age in a lot of spots. And, you know, this is an if We you, won't go into details on what kind of This is an if you know, you know. And yeah. uh, mm, your boy was caught out. I'm not too proud to admit it. I was like, what is this? <laughs> what? what? What out of term sort of election did I miss? Because I would not have voted yes on this. I people promise you are that. going nuts in these streets, guys. Oh man, I was uh, I was like, golly, you had options. Options are good. You could take a picture of your man. driver's license, or you could take a picture of you. And I thought, oh, I'm gonna print up a picture of somebody. Hold I'm that just, up to the camera. It's people I never thought in a million years posting about it. Well, I mean, it's weird. There's more stuff than that, but that's the one that has affected my day to day or evening to late evening. Uh, in my bits box, I have finally. Wait, aren't you at work in the late evening? Well, only a few de- times a week. <laughs> You're like, I'm going to take my lunch break. Hold up. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to take my lunch break and verify my age for this oh, salaciousness. God. For this sandwich. For this, <laughs> for this slaneshi goodness. Okay, um, moving on. I have uh, I I nearly finished the uh, Lady Olinda the Martucker grief. Yeah, go check that out on Twitter, guys. It looks really dope. Yeah. I love the face. All that that we said about X was getting back to that, and uh, I kind of like the way she turned out. I've I'm still going on with going louder and louder on the highlight passes, and my highlights are gaudy. They're like a poor man's highlight, but I'm looking for they are. But that's their charm. Well. It, I was I was talking to the homie Dallas about this uh, while he was working at a uh, Gamers Haven. Shout out Gamers Haven, the friendly local game store. Also, shout out to the Foundry that actually had some blood for the Blood God in stock um, last week when I swung by there looking for that because I need a little I need I need a little bit of you know giblets all around my some of my guys. I feel like. You know, my wife is always complaining that I actually don't use that in my paint jobs when I have it. I don't know. I just, I feel like I don't do blood splatter justice unless I'm doing the super extra oohoo glue and like spots and like just hanging off the yeah, model. Yeah, right. When you, you know, get it, when, you, when you get it stringy. Yeah. Yeah, no, I like it stringy. Um, and I don't have that stuff, so. Okay, the other thing that I've done is I played a game yesterday, and it was a good game, Played against the homie Dalton. Had never even seen Dalton. We're doing a we're doing a league. There's probably thirty people in the league. You've shout out to play, the league. Shout out to the league. You've got to play six games over the next like three months or something. So I got my game one in against Dalton. I got mine in. I'm getting mine in Saturday. Yeah, I've got my game two in Saturday, and uh, that was a good game. So what happened was what had happened is uh, Dalton's. Death Watch showed up to inspect reports of a Black Legion incursion. And then they found Abaddon himself on the scene. Surprise. Surprise. And uh, there were no survivors. <laughs> you, you tabled him? I, I did table him in turn four. There were a couple of moments. I saw that score. Yeah, there there were a couple of moments. Ninety five to the what, like forty seven? No, no, it was just ninety flat. It was ninety to twenty one. Uh, but it didn't feel like that level of blowout, okay? Because there were a couple of moments where Dalton, because he was able to pick up his guys and move them around, that could have swung the game. And I burned, f- 
five command points in one turn at a crucial moment. And he also failed some crucial charges, and that Ooh. sealed his fate. Those, Dice tell stories. Yeah, and it and it was it was really good. Abaddon, of course, did work. Harkin did work. When do they not? The Master of Execution did work. You give him the intoxicating elixir, put him with the hacky slashy squad of five legionaries, and you don't want no parts of them with their five up feel no pain. You look like you're riding a Segway there, Shame. What are you talking about? Gonna segue this conversation over. Yeah, but we have to get to your bits box. We first. do, we do. We'll get to that later. <laughs> Future callback to my segue writing. So I have been. Uh, it's been a pretty slow week, but it's been a really rough week for me. It's it's been very interesting. Um, very up and very down. Lots of good news early on the week. These last few days have been pretty rough at work. Not gonna go into it, but I have been hit up by a part of our local gaming community by a boy named Zach Gibson. He has asked me to do a commission for him. He's on vacation right now. He gets back, I want to say Monday, so like in five days. Homie five Zach, days? shout out. Yeah, homie Zach, shout out. He's having me paint the Space Marine half of the Leviathan box. The whole half? The whole half. And the Imperial Fist Bastion box from Christmas. What is that? It's Tor Garadon, who's a character, three squads of heavy intercessors, and an aggressor squad. On top of, let's see, the new Dreadnought from the Leviathan box, the new characters, who's the uh, Terminator captain, the Space Marine Librarian Terminator, <laughs> the Phobos Armored Lieutenant, and also, I think, a couple of Stern Guard veteran squads in there. Yeah, and that... I'm going to die. So that Christmas box, that's one of those bigger boxes, right, that somewhere around 1,000 points? Yeah, around there. And the Combat Patrol tend to end up five. Yeah. But this is one of those big boxes. Yeah, and the special iconography and characters all over. Ooh, it's specific to Imperial Fists. I have never met anybody, but... Are uh, the Imperial one Fists guy. the yellow ones? Yes, they are. Yeah. He's, he doesn't want them yellow, does he? He wants them yellow. Oh, And you know me, I no. love painting yellow. Do you? I do, and I'm excited because everybody's like, this is how you paint yellow, and this is how you paint yellow, or yellow sucks, don't paint it, and I have my ways of doing it. And I'm going to try out a new recipe or two, get creative with it, Man. get really into it. Close the bits box. Close it. Close it. Shut it down. I'm jumping on my Segway. I'm going to do donuts while fighting with a chainsaw. Ride that Segway. And that, your painting yellow on those Imperial Fists sounds like a wonderful future painting pod. And that is what we have for you today. This is a bit of a different format. So if you guys have noticed, we've probably had some sort of graphic. If you're on the YouTube at 40K Fanatics, subscribe, like the videos, comment, share, etc., uh, We've had some sort of imaging throughout. But now, we're going to take you to the moving pictures. Yeah. As we handle and discuss in real time a model each. And the idea is to talk about how we would like to improve our painting. So hopefully, as you watch these guys go around on the turntable, you too can see what we're talking about and get a sense for how you might improve your painting if you recognize any of our uh, shortcomings or things that you like that we've done that you want to incorporate into your deal in our models. So, you want to go first? Or would you like me to lead off? Uh, it, let's, let's let you lead off. You lead off, yeah. Because I really love your, your model. And apparently he's really good on the tabletop. Man. Right now. So, and I know you're going to talk about that. I have brought the Master of Execution who put in such work against the poor Death Watch yesterday, whenever it was. And um, I really enjoy painting characters. So this guy, he's straight Black Legion. Sort of, um, I mean, this is for the, we're going to try to do a lot of describing for the audio listeners because we know that that's the majority of our audience. However, if you, if you know people that like podcasts off YouTube, Tell them to go and check us out there because we have all the backlog of episodes there and uh, you can put them on while you're painting or while you're playing or while you're reading your rule book or whatever you want. 
And uh, so he's straight Black Legion. He's He's got a pair of heads in his hand. He's got a giant axe. And he has this sewn-together hide skirt. Skin leather. Skin leather skirt. Jacket. Yeah. Now, there were two. Jerkin? Yeah. There were two head options for this dress. guy. One hat. Yeah, it's a dress. <laughs> like, it's a very. Kilt. It's a manly man dress is what it is. This guy had two head options, and one of them had some sort of um, leather face, you know, Texas Chainsaw Massacre head. And then the other, he's got like no lower jaw and is missing an eye. So I picked the one with no lower jaw missing an eye because I like I like experimenting with painting the flesh on these guys because with Chaos Space Marines, you do not get a lot of opportunity to do so. And so I like them. Like I'm, a, I'm an anti-helmet guy, you know. Aren't we all? No, we're not. <laughs> I, I was I was talking to the homies the other day, and I was telling them how I'm never picking helmets, and they're like, "Oh no, all helmets, all helmets." I don't want to paint faces. I'm like, "You yeah. guys are tripping. Forget the helmet. Too much details, hard to get into it. And yeah, if you do but, it okay, it just doesn't look a hundred percent. And I think that's the biggest gripe. But, but continue. But when you get it, then they all you know they feel like they got some something to say, you know? Yeah. So got a name. Um. Oh, no, here comes a, a character with a name. Oh, right. no, he's not wearing a helmet either. We're all going to die. Yeah, I'm going to remember that guy and what he did to me. So points of focus on this model for me were was the attempt at a, at a patina on his axe blade because I didn't have any blood for the blood god because with a master of execution, most of the time you'll see them with the blood for the blood god strewn all over this thing. And that would look really good, and I like that every time I see it. The other point of focus was the highlighting on his dress skirt, which is a part that I'd like to improve and have been working on, but also it's become a bit of my personal style where I'm trying to just do white, straight white highlight lines. I am not to a point where I feel confident in blending colors, and so I do this to give, in this case, a washed brown, some, something that stops it from being just a dirty rag so that you can read the folds and the sort of flow of the skirt. You pick now, out the details. Yeah. Now, I'm going to hand him off to you, and you tell me what you like, what you don't like, what you think about that. And I think, I think I'll, if you'll hand me your guy... Oh, I don't get to talk about my guy? Well, okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll be looking him over. Okay. So what stands out to me about this guy, really, first off the bat, I want to say is the gold. You didn't use Retributor Armor Gold, did you? No. So, uh, What would you use? I've got the Vallejo Gold. Yeah, he used Vallejo Gold, which is kind of a more silvery, a little bit brighter version of gold, and it really stands out because of how yellow it is and reflects the light. He's got it on this thing, and it lo really stands out. Also, I've always appreciated how Shane's pale skin on his Chaos models look because I have just recently got into painting pale skin and I've ne not re fully mastered it, and he's got a good take on it. So, like, I think one of the f when we first played a game against each other, right, uh, the, f the first thing I asked you was, what is your paint recipe <laughs> for the skin, remember? Yeah, so the recipe is that... I put white on it first, so that guy was uh, that guy was primed black, and uh, and then he was dry brushed with white because that's sort of the recipe currently for black armor is that after the prime of the dry brush, nothing else happens. And another thing that stands out to me is the uh, is the leather. So once you come around to the back, the dark is a little front. I can definitely see the washes, but when you get around to the back, because and I'll tell you why that's fine. Because his arm is up and it's underneath cover of like what the stuff he's holding, so that's uh, that's normal. But I go around to the back and you see this back and it looks so good because not only do you have this deep dark brown like you would see in leather, just like in suede or like in leather, you know, it looks like a patch or a sh shadow, but it's part of the leather. He he has that and he's really pulled it off. And then the stitching. Uh, the stitching isn't freehand, is it? No, it's not. No, it's molded in. And uh, what I did with that is I took a slightly lighter uh, 
I took a slightly lighter, lighter brown. brown and went out and just sort of like ran the side of my brush over it. I didn't yeah. go and pick out every single thread, which you could do if you wanted to. Yeah. Um, and then your highlights on the black. I like the highlights on the black because it looks more like scratched or shined metal. So that's just the dry brushing. And that, that really comes off good. I thought yeah. it was dry brushing. I was going to yeah. ask. And and then there's nothing else. So I used to would thin down contrast black mm-hmm. and go over that and it would it it would uh tone those those values down and make it a little smoother, but then it would read darker. And it's like my whole idea, the thing that I'm trying to get better at is getting those color values wider so that the darks are really dark and the lights are really light. Because in my opinion, that's what separates the really, really good painters that you watch on YouTube and, you know, people that just paint stuff. Is you, you look at your Squid Mars and your Ninjons and your uh, Miniac. I actually just described a Ninjon because of you, by the way. He's, he's really good. And uh, they, they get stuff that is so dark in the dark spots and so bright in the bright spots. And obviously, when you're doing pale guy with black armor there's not a whole lot of room to move in my opinion because i'm not doing like uh, object source lighting schemes which would be the way to do it but i think for your sort of base coated style miniature painting I, I i think that i think that getting your black to read is something other than black is probably the answer as, as far as that skin tone and things it's Paint it white, run over it with, with um, a tan color, and at that point you could stop, and he would look like your guy, which we'll show in a moment. Um, but then I I take like a red wash, and that gives me some that gives me some you know some blood in it, right? Then I go back, final coat. This is over the wash, which is either some sort of super pale brown color like almost white or straight white and then that's like a really really thin down wet layer and by that point you get this you know you've kind of layered that stuff in and you get some some depth to it where it doesn't just look like you went color fill on photoshop tan yeah and you've you've also done like a really good job with uh, differentiating the colors on the heads that he's holding being the master of executions he has two model heads in his hand grasped by the hair which look really dope uh one is a darker colored guy uh he honestly looks jaundiced which yeah. i think is really what, is that where you're going that for? was what jaundiced? i was going for I, I, which I, works most yeah. people go with like a green like a zombie flesh thing but you went with a jaundice and i think that looks way more impressive because it's like it's not rotting but it's just about to go it's that bag turkey in the fridge about to go about to yeah. go and then uh you got the other guy and he's just pale but you put in a little bit more highlights to him and it looks a little bit more fleshy like he was uh like he was recently taken fresher yeah, like it was fresh, like it was right off the bat. Just need some blood for the blood god. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I just really think it's cool. The face. Um, I'm having a hard time picking out the detail around his mouth because I think there's like a Vox grill or something like that. Well, he's he's missing his whole lower jaw. Yeah, he's missing his lower and jaw. He's, he's got some little tube that goes in his mouth, and I guess that's where he's uh, eating and talking. Okay. He's he's got like guitar talk box. I imagine he's he's sounds- also missing an eye. Yeah, and he's missing an eye. I imagine he sounds like a uh, uh, Joe Walsh in the middle of a solo. But uh, what were you saying you did with the axe? What was it called? Per uh, I tried to put a pati- patina, patina. Like yeah, like it's a little bit funky metal on that. Like you'd get you if you survived, you would definitely get tetanus. Well, it makes me think of not really dirty, but it makes me think of like if you walked with a perfectly clean weapon through smoke as it was going off around you. The smoke collecting on the metal is generally what this looks like to me. Like if I took a rag to it and wiped it, it come clean off. Well, the I think the big thing with it is it's not just silver because it's a huge surface. Yeah. And initially, you know, I I did it in silver, and then it was like, well, that's boring. 
And at no point was I going to stop there. The whole the idea was to do a patina. If I had some of the like dirty down rust stuff, I would have experimented it with it. You know, around uh, not around the sharp edge, but around the other edge, as if there had been a buildup of gunk and crud that he doesn't care anything about. Right? Yeah. Obviously, the cutting part stays fresh because he is busy with it. And I like that the uh, the lavender in there. His ba- your base looks really good. The differentiating in the different colors, uh, you just using dry brush, really pulls it together because it looks like you went in with I'm guessing a bit a technical paint, let it dry. You painted a p- good portion like tan, and then left the shades or the shadows a little bit darker on there, and then went in with the dry brush of white. Is that right? Yeah. What it is is uh, it's the AK texture paint, the desert. Yeah. So you throw that down, and then I take a a brown wash, goop it all over the thing, and you got to wait for all these steps to dry, and then finally, uh, dry brush white, and it looks and, good, and you're, and you're done. The and, lavender and brings it all together. If you, there's a spot of the lavender flowers. and grass tufts on this, so one of the hardest things about doing bases, they if you want to go extra, you don't know what kind of grass tufts you need until you put on it. And Shane's kind of brought it all together with sort of like a, a dried grass tufts on the back, uh, one up front with a lavender, and it actually looks like it belongs in this environment, which I think is is really bringing it all together. And honestly, you should have entered this into the painting competition. Well, I did, I, 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 I did, I did think about entering him because he was just done before the uh, competition happened. But, you know, maybe we'll bring and talk about Gary the GIF or Jerry Next the time we do this, yeah, or Jerry the Jif, they're the same guy. I, I did get to play with him at a D&D game the other day. Oh, yeah? So, so swap it over to my side? Tell me what you hate. What I hate. Um, it's the the lower jaw. It's hard to tell where his face, where his, what's exactly like going on with his mouth. Because you said he was missing his lower jaw. And I could kind of tell the teeth. The tube's hard to see. But I still like the face and the head draw attention away from it. So it's good. <laughs> but that's the that's like my only critique because I thought like near it a piece of paint was actually chipping off. It looked like it was a, a th- I thought it was a mustache, but I think you like put a black line or something there. Um, that's yeah, fa- faces are not my strongest suit. So what I what I try to do on faces? Are? Well, I don't know. I mean, your face on this guy looks amazing. I but, put a lot of time in it. Yeah. Though. Well, let's talk about him. Here, okay. I'm gonna hand him back. I've had a close look and gathered my thoughts. You okay. tell me what this guy is and what the process and thoughts were. So I ended up wanting to buy every single model out of this Space Marine Heroes boxes that came out recently. They're all blisters. You can get them for like eight bucks from the store. And I'm like, okay, cool. I get a model for like eight bucks. Super cheap. But they are cheaply made. I will say that. The okay. mold lines are very running together. And there's actually flash on hard plastic. I didn't know that was a thing. Anyways, I wanted to get each one of these. I got about five. And then I went to go to the store at the foundry. Shout out to the foundry. To grab the last one. And someone bought it. No. The day of the 40K tournament. (laughs) So I was pretty upset. I recently finished those Dark Angels and said, I'm going to get my small little pile of shame, would you call it? Oh, yeah. Okay, smaller than a pile, bigger than a stash of models. And I had these five models out of six laying around, half painted, some partially painted. And I said this weekend, you know what? My family's gone. They're going to visit the grandparents. I'm home alone, risky business style. I spent five hours. You slid to your painting desk in your underwear. Yep, (laughs) slid to my... Listen to uh, watch. Listen to some Adeptus Ridiculous. Listen to, to some lore. Uh, watch some Venture Brothers. Got a new audio book. Man, I was at it. I went at eleven o'clock Saturday morning. I don't think I stopped till three p.m. I was like, "Why am I hungry? It's only like 12. <laughs> and then again Sunday from like a like eleven to one thirty, and I got five, four out of the five done. I already had one done, and I got four done. And uh, I just really like this one because I thought, you know what? Instead of having just the sergeant be the character, I'm going to have another guy who's going to be like, I'm going to be the character as well. And let me tell you, his face was a pain to paint. 
I also just started painting with an airbrush, so I use them kind of as tester models. So okay. tell me what you think. So you airbrushed him red. Yes. He is a Space Marine firstborn named Brother Arturos from the Space Marine Heroes box. He is priming a grenade in one hand, underslinging his bolter in the other, and he is about to chuck that thing. He's reared back to throw it, and he's screaming as he did it. He's clearly screaming death to the Xenos. Yes, he's got full red armor with a yellow teardrop on the right pauldron. He's got a blonde, what would you say that is, a high and tight No, Mohawk, that's a, that's, a, that's one of those, like, too old to still be a <laughs> drill instructor, drill instructor <laughs> yeah. mo- uh, mohawks. Because it's not tall. Yeah, it's, it's not. It's just, I'm going to shave the sides. But his, but his hair is receding. <laughs> yeah. And um, Oh, who was that uh, UFC fighter that had that haircut? What's oh, that God. guy's Chuck name? Liddell. Chuck Liddell. Chuck Liddell. He's got the Chuck Liddell. He's got a Chuck Liddell. Yeah, so he is primed a grenade. He's got a sling of grenades going across his chest, and he is ready to get down to business. Shane, what do you think? I think that your paint jobs, every single one that I see, I'm going to do the good first, and then I'll do what I'm not crazy about. Naturally. They're so clean. I feel like you have a way, and I don't know the way, to get just... Just get the paint on so smooth. And I don't feel like mine ever turn out that way. And that could be because I'm not ever painting a color on a big surface. I'm doing a lot of like the gold edge all the way around type thing. Or I'm doing a cloth and, I do, and I'm not looking for like a smooth metal. But you get these, like this dude's legs are so smooth. He's a smooth boy all over. Now, the face, the face is spectacular. I, when I do eyes, I either do them as little black dots or I do them in red. I only had one red, one red eye to do on the Master of Execution, and I was happy to get away it with, pops. with making one teensy little red dot, right? Yeah. You have gone in here and... Made blue eyes with dots. And boy, let me tell you, that was difficult. And they're pointed the right direction. And I'm just like, how? Was there a magnifying glass involved? No, I did that all just normal with my normal painting setup. I went in, painted the eye black, went in with some uh, little bit of white scar, and then found where I wanted his eyes to sit, put a black pupil in there, and then... On the side of that black pupil, just a dot of blue. Now, the his his right eye was the first one, and it was done. It was quick. The left eye, over I had and over so and over again. many layers. I had to scrape it off with my thumbnail. Oh, gosh. Because it was so globbed on, because I kept trying and trying and trying, and they were thinned, and I was like, I'll keep trying. But eventually, I got it, and it looks okay. Yeah. I like him. I like... I mean... These are probably going to be... He is probably one of my last metallic metal paint Space Marines and he, or model in period. He's got an Aquila on the back of his backpack that looks like... You, you painted that tiny little Aquila so cleanly that it doesn't look like it was... It, it looks like a decal that was welded on, is what I'm saying. Like if you took a hat pin or a badge and just like melt it, weld yes. it on, yeah? Yes. If someone told you, hey, that, is, that was the same color as the rest of the plastic, you'd be shocked. And that, I think, is my biggest um, sort of envy of your paint jobs. Is that just, small detail was actually dry, bro- dry brush. It was black originally, and then wow. I went with a, an off-white gray and uh, barely touched it, and then, yeah. Yeah, well, see, somehow the, the edges of it and everything get covered. And mine don't ever turn out that way. His pouches are ridiculously clean. It's all ridiculously clean. And uh, kind of a shame that the bases come sort of pre-done on these. Oh, you mean molded? Yeah, the molded bases on these guys. Yeah, uh, I just, what I did with him, I was like... Is this guy a snap fit thing? Or is yeah, he's a snap fit, th- or a push fit, my bad, push fit. Um, his base came th- that way. All I did was paint it. I just put some black Templar all over it, dry brushed it with a little bit of off-white... 
and metal on the parts that are metal that I wanted to do metal. Um, Tell me about this pin wash thing going on in his in his uh, armor panel lines. Ooh, is that, is that what's I'm happening so there? I'm so glad you noticed. So with Space Marines, with a lot of models, but particularly Space Marines, people like to do something called recess shading. You know what this is, right? I do. You take a wash, like particularly null oil, and then you put it in the cracks and crevices. People like some people even use like black ink. What I did, and I saw this like randomly on a on a feed or like a short. I don't know where. What you do is you take your wet brush, go over the small detail, and then you come in with some null oil, and it just slides into the detail or the cracks or crevices that you've gone over with that wet water and then let it dry and it looks a lot smoother like if you look at his right pauldron and that shade like curves Mm -hmm. it's because it was in water yeah i've seen uh i've seen jay on eons of battle do the pin wash with ink where he gets the ink super thin and uh the best, the best example that I've seen of him doing that is not, he was painting a bunch of Necrons and just touching all over, and it would just flow through the entire, you know, how they've got it's all It's very that. satisfying. Yeah, it, it looked very satisfying. I am almost out of Nolan oil, though. <laughs> um, so that's the positive. It's just the cleanliness, in my opinion. And that is something that I would like to have a little more of, at least in places, you know? I think that... I think that all this kind of stuff, a person's diff, you know, one person's style versus another, those are all tools in the toolbox that wouldn't hurt for everybody to have, you know? Like somebody that paints messy, I would I would bet that you would have a difficult time painting messy. I probably would. I'm very paint by the numbers. I'm very heavy, stuck in the heavy metal style. That's why I got this airbrush to kind of break away from that. Yeah, well, because sometimes you get a different type of model or a different faction or whatever, and it's like, well, this guy needs to be a little mucked up, and then that becomes a really hard paint job for you because you're Mr. Paint Clean, whereas somebody who could never paint clean is like, oh. Pablo Picasso over yeah, here. Yeah, move out of the way. Let me Let me mess this orc up or whatever it may be. Um, What's his name? Uh, Jason uh, Pollock. Uh, Jackson, Jackson, pa- Pollock. Jackson Pollock painting yeah. the bottle. <laughs> Is that what you mean? Yeah. All over the place. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, what do I hate about it? What do you hate about it, Shane? Hit it, me. It's so dang clean. Oh, you mean it's not dirty. What I mean... He's is, in battle. What I mean and is... And he's pristine. It, it, it isn't even that. It, it's not that. It is that... I feel like it doesn't have a lot of depth of color in the red. He's kind of all one color red. And if I get him... Yep, I noticed it, it, it was a hard problem I had. Um, I went in, uh, painted the whole thing with my airbrush, did Mephist in red, and then a highlight of Evil Suns. And I was like, man, he matches way too much, even in the shadows. That's right. It, so it, if it's you like look he- at the tops of the shoulders and the kneecaps and his backpack there... I mixed Evil Sun's red with a little bit of orange, and it's supposed to be just a little lighter. I, I had dry brushed it on, but it's so subtle, but it stands out just a little bit. Yeah. Well, and that is my critique, and I've made it to you before, of the majority of your paint jobs is your style doesn't have a lot of uh, different values. And I think that this guy, if he had been, say... Box art. Primed black, and then zenithaled from the top with whatever color, white. And then if you had gone and airbrushed him red, you would have got, like, like his cod piece is super bright and visible, even though it's on the bottom of him. And, you know, 12, yeah. 12 o'clock sun, it would be very dark down there. Yeah. Right? But, but he's not. He's as if he's being lit for... Uh, well, you know what? It's like you say. It's like a box art. It's like he's being lit straight on for picture day. Yeah, which is neat. But I think I think that I think that there's a level of pop that you could be having with this level of cleanliness that is not yet been fully realized. What do you think of the teardrop? I think the teardrop is great. I uh, I would not freehand my guy. Yeah, I know. I wouldn't know where to start with that. 
Like it would be. I just feel like it's not solid enough. You know, it's not like the decal. It's there, but it looks. You could definitely tell that's painted on. Yeah, you know what I mean. Uh, right. So you're saying like you want that edge to be sharper. Well, like look in the center of the yellow, and you'll definitely tell there's like some run. Yes, I see that. Yeah, there you go. You know, and that drove me nuts. But that's three layers of water or thin yellow Avalon Sunset. So yeah, well, and yellow getting yellow to even show is a trick of its own. Um, yeah, I want to see you do this cleanliness with some with some dark and light going on. I th- I think that it's the next level. A little bit more contrast with the shades. Yeah, I I, I think like his. His shoulders and the parts that you want to see should really be shining, and then the other parts, not so much. And I, and I think that this kind of model with his old school, like what 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 series of armor is that? Because that's not the current newest, is it? No, that is because he's a firstborn marine, and right. he's not a primaris marine, so he probably has like a core, not Corvus, but um, he probably has like tactic, not tacticus, Aquila armor. Yeah, because. Uh, they don't have like these bell bottoms anymore, because he's a, he's like real bell bottom pants mm-hmm. with the funny kneecaps, yeah. which would be amazing for some heavy duty difference between like one side of the leg and the other side of the leg because they're so smooth. And then your ability to paint so smooth, he would look unbelievable. Yeah, I was actually surprised they did this whole series with firstborn space marines right know? before they got ready to retire. Right them. before they retired them. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, play kill team with them, I guess. Yeah, definitely. Um, I, th- I think we're supposed to do a kill team demo uh, Saturday, which will be the day after this pod comes out, and uh, that's going to be a good time. You ought to come to that. I think we're going to do it round robin style, where we'll have one guy do an activation, the next guy do an activation, and just run around. The I might. Table I have like a that. birthday party, and also my first round of the league that day. So let's let's see how that plays out. Let's see. You're playing orcs, yeah. Yep, my orcs. 2K of orcs throwing everything but the kitchen sink. I like it. Against knights. Well, in conclusion, I I want to be able to put the I'm paint... I'm too clean and you're too dirty. Yeah, <laughs> I, I want to be able to put the paint down as smooth as you. And... And I want to contrast highlight better like you. Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying I'm doing it right. Neither of us are saying we're doing it right. And that's the beauty of painting and art. You you do your own thing, and if it looks good to you, it looks good to you. And if you think it needs to look better, you can learn. Well, and also, so I play piano and golf and all these things, right? And the trick to learning a thing is to pick one thing and get better at that thing. And I don't mean like, okay, I want to be a better painter, so I'm going to pick painting and get better at painting. I mean focus in. What is it particularly that you want to improve. What skill in this thing do you want to get better at? You know, uh, playing piano, I want to get better at walking bass lines. Okay, well, that's going to be the point Time. of focus. That's going to be the point of focus, though. You know, golf, I want to get better at hitting my wedges. So that's going to be the point of focus. 10,000 hours. Well, 10,000 hours of focusing on the right thing, though. Yes, that's true. Because you could do 10,000 hours of painting exactly like this. And they're all going to look I really probably good have. like this. <laughs> there, there you go. And that's why I'm trying to get away from the heavy metal style because you know you can do too much stuff, and then you see somebody like you see somebody like the box art, and then you're like, "Whoa, that looks cool!" But then you see something like Squidmar paints, totally out of left Ooh. field. Uh, you know, clean. And that's yeah. why I'm switching over to more non-metallic metal and airbrushing. And you know, so I'm I'm taking on challenges. People, give me your characters. Let's go. Yeah, let me tell you, if you guys want us to paint any of your stuff, um, I love to paint me a character. And I'm broke. <laughs> and, and Casey's broke. Support us, though. And Shane's out of stuff to paint. And I'm out of stuff to paint. I, I have, like, I've got a black coach left to build and paint, which will be a big job. You but. know what I did not hear from you about critiquing on my model? What's that? That's the base rim. Oh, yeah. Um he has heretical base rims that are not black. <laughs> friends, don't let box friends. art. Box art. <laughs> Come on. What if I told you the Imperium can be wrong too? Oh, he went there. 
That's why I'm a filthy Xenos player. And that's though. why I'm a Chaos player, isn't it? There you go. Anyhow, I need stuff to paint because I'm out of stuff to paint. Zach, uh, uh, Casey, I, I can't decide what Casey. we're calling you. Yeah, Casey. Casey's broke. The lore master. Support us. How can they do that? They can like the pod. They sure. can subscribe to the pod. We need Share more people on here. Uh, interact with us on our social medias at 40K Fanatics on X. Uh, <laughs> let us know your opinion on motorcycles. <laughs> Generally and in 40K, I would like to White hear... Scars players, get them. Yeah. They know all you hear is crickets. I, I don't know anything about White Scars. <laughs> they're, they're the... They're the vehicle boys, right? Ooh, yes, but uh, uh, this weekend we're talking about their Primark on the lore video on the YouTube channel. So give give a look at our YouTube channel. Tell us what we're doing wrong. Yeah, and go check out this one on the YouTube as well. Even yes. if you listen to, if you just play we're with uploading sound both. Off, that way you can see what these models look like that we've talked about today, and hopefully it can help your painting a little bit. I've been Shane, and I'm Casey, not Zach. <laughs> we will see you next week on. 40k fanatics peace